All right. Um, hello, everyone. Please make sure that you complete your do now. It's for all learners, not just remote learners, but I need everyone to complete your do now. Um, so make sure you do your discussion board. Notes, checking for extraneous solutions. It's our last part of section 2.1. Extraneous solutions are bogus solutions. An extraneous solution is a solution that you get algebraically solving the equation. However, when you substitute it back into the original, it does not produce a true statement. Okay. So what are we going to do? So steps to solve absolute value equations with a variable on both sides. So this is why you get extraneous solutions. That variable on both sides. So you have a variable within the absolute value bar and you have a variable outside the absolute value bar. Okay. We're going to write the original equation. So you want to make sure you write the original equation and that it is by itself. So you want it to be in this format, absolute value equals blah, 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 blah. Um, rewrite as two equations, the non-absolute value side as is, and then you're going to write it as multiplied by negative one. You're going to solve for x in both problems, check each solution, and you want to verify that both make a true statement. So here we have an um, absolute value of 3x plus 2 equals 4x plus 5. And notice how I have a, a variable on the outside. Okay, that lets me know that there's a possibility for an extraneous solution, more than a possibility for an extraneous solution. So we're going to rewrite it, uh, making sure that it's the absolute value equal to all the other terms. And that's true, our absolute value is equal to all the other terms. So when we do that, we're going to end up with, we're going to do the first one. So first I'm going to do 3x plus 2 equals 4x plus 5. And I'm going to solve for this one. So I am going to, I like to move my smallest variable. So minus 3x. And that's going to give me 2 equals x plus 5. So I'm going to subtract my 5. And that gives me negative 3 equals x. So I have negative 3 equals x. And I'm going to test to see if that satisfies my original. So I'm going to test to see that it satisfies my original. Um, so we're going to put an absolute value of 3 times negative 3 plus 2 equals 4 times negative 3 plus 5. So that's going to give me the absolute value of negative 9 plus 2 equals negative 12 plus 5. Absolute value of negative 9 plus 2 is absolute value of negative 7, which equals negative 7. And absolute value of negative 7 is positive 7, so this is not a true statement. So that lets me know that negative 3 is an extraneous solution. Algebraically, everything checks out. However, when I go through the math, it does not. Okay, I'm going to check my second one. So then my second one, it says that you're going to um, multiply what it's equal to by negative 1. So I have 3x plus 2 equals negative 1 times 4x plus 5. Okay, I'm going to distribute the negative 1. That gives me 3x plus 2 equals negative 4x minus 5. I'm going to move my smallest variable. Again, you do not have to. It does not matter. I think I just was told by a teacher to move your smallest variable. And since then, I've always moved my smallest variable. So I subtract 2. And I'm left with 7x equals negative 7. Divide by 7. And I get x equals negative 1. So now I'm going to test x equals negative 1. So I'm going to test it. So the absolute value of 3 times negative 1 plus 2 equals 4 times negative 1 plus 5. Evaluate. So I have negative 3 plus 2 equals negative 4 plus 5. That gives me negative 1 equals positive 1. The absolute value of negative 1 is positive 1. This is a true statement, so therefore this is my real solution. All right, let's do a couple more. 
we have absolute value of 3x minus 2 equals 7x plus 14. Again, there's a variable outside of the absolute value, so let's know I'm going to have a possible extraneous solution. So I'm going to test the first one. So we have 3x, not sine 3, that is a 5. Just make sure you're paying attention. We have 5x minus 2 equals 7x plus 14. Okay, so I'm going to, again, I'm prone to move my smallest variable. So that gives me negative 2 equals 2x plus 14. I'm going to subtract 14. That gives me negative 16 equals 2x. So I'm going to divide by 2. And that gives me uh, negative 8 equals x. Okay, so this is what I'm testing. So I'm going to substitute negative 8 back in to the original. So we have 5 times negative 8 minus 2 equals 7 times negative 8 plus 14. This gives me the absolute value of negative 40 minus 2 equals negative 56 plus 14. Absolute value of negative 42 equals negative 42. And then the absolute value of negative 42 is positive 42, which does not equal negative 42. So this is the extraneous. Okay, um, now we're going to test the other one. So this time when we test for the next solution, you want to make sure that you're multiplying the non-absolute value side by negative 1. It just basically means you're changing the signs of its terms. So we have 5x minus 2 equals negative 7x minus 14. I'm going to add 7x. 7x. That leaves me with 12x minus 2 equals negative 14. I'm going to add 2. Add 2. That gives me 12x equals negative 12. Divide 12. Divide 12. And that gives me x equals negative 1. I'm going to test it. So I'm going to substitute that back into the original. So we have 5 times negative 1 minus 2 equals 7 times negative 1 plus 14. That's going to give me negative 5 minus 2 equals negative 7 plus 14. That gives me negative 7. Absolute value equals positive 7. The absolute value of negative 7 is 7. And boom, true statement. So this is my real solution. Okay, our last one we're going to do together. All right, so notice here on the this original, it actually has a number, a term outside of the absolute value. So I have this term outside. So before I can do anything, I'm going to need to move that term. So in order to move that term, I'm going to have to add um, three to both sides, right? So I need it. This guy is going to have to be moved. So I'm going to add three to both sides. So my original now is 2x minus 7 equals 5x plus 14. This is my new OG, my new original, okay? All right, so now I'm going to start. So I'm going to set up the first one, which is 2x minus 7 equals 5x plus 14. Unchanged, nothing different. One of these days I'll stop, but I don't know. When I will stop moving the smaller one. Okay, and we're going to get negative 7 equals x. All right, so that's what I'm going to test out. So I'm going to test, and again, into the original. So we have uh, 2 times negative 7 minus 7 equals 5 times negative 7 
plus 14. And 2 times negative 7 is negative 14. Minus 7 equals, this is negative 35 plus 14. This gives me absolute value of negative 21, which equals negative 21. Absolute value of negative 21 is, however, positive 21. So therefore, these are not equal statement, and this is an extraneous. All right, so we're gonna do number the second one. So our second, we have um, 2x minus seven equals negative one times 5x plus 14. Make sure I distribute that negative one and I get 2x minus seven equals negative 5x minus 14. I'm gonna add 5x, add 5x, gives me 7x, equals negative seven, I'm sorry, I didn't equal it. Negative seven minus, there we go. Seven x minus seven equals negative 14. I'm gonna add seven, add seven. I get seven x equals negative seven, divide by seven. I get x equals negative one. So I'm going to test x equals negative 1. So into my original, so we have 2 times negative 1 minus 7 equals 5 times negative 1 plus 14. That gives me the absolute value of negative 2 minus 7 equals negative 5 plus 14. Absolute value of negative 9 equals 9. Absolute value of negative 9 is 9 equals 9. That is a true statement. So this guy is my real. Okay. And so now, here is your classwork. You have the remaining time of the period to go ahead and complete these six problems. Show your work. You will work them in your workbook. Take a picture and upload them to your campus. All right. Let me know if I can help you. Have a great day.